Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today, I thought I would take a look at retail news compared to the way a billionaire fundamental analyst would view the markets. So if you like the sound of that, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and don't forget to check out the Investor Accelerator Lite, which is launching on Monday. Link to that is in the description below. Big discounts for the first 500. Okay, so today's video is more focused around the news and the fundamental information. This got me thinking as I was watching the Michael Saylor interview with Benjamin Cohen, another uh, crypto YouTuber looking primarily at data, maths, and charts. And so the interview came about uh, looking at one viewpoint of the market and another viewpoint of the market. And there was a little bit of the two of them hitting heads a little bit. They didn't really sort of understand each other. But overall, I think the interview was pretty good and I got a lot from it. And so this is what brought up an idea to put together this video and just look at the past three, four months of what we've already come from in, in crypto. So the news primarily and then of course what has happened on the chart and whether we can actually make money from that or is it better to go with say like a fundamentalist approach, understand what it is that we're investing in and not worry about the news and just go hard at that investment until a major catalyst changes which means we would have to change our position. So I'm going to start with, say, the big news. And I'm just using Cardano as an example here today. It tends to be one that gets a lot of news. We know Bitcoin gets a lot of news. Ethereum gets a lot of news. Cardano gets a lot of news. This is just the main stuff that I see. So yes, there are other things out there, but let's go with what we have right now. So I'm going to look at the news looking back on the last three or four months for Cardano and then looking at it on the chart. And then also we're going to compare that to Michael Saylor, his views and what that has looked like on the chart as well in terms of a return. One last proviso I'll put here is that, yes, it does come down to timing. So if people are late to the market, this isn't going to be as helpful because they need to understand what it is they're investing in first and then find a good time to get in, which is where the charting helps. So what I've got first is Grayscale, buys Cardano, ADA is now the fund's third largest holding. This just came out in the last few hours. You may have seen it already, you may have not. And basically, Grayscale has got the most Bitcoin. They hold hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin in their uh, in their funds. Bitcoin is 67% of their weighting. So this is of July 1st, if I'm reading it the American way. Uh, 25th, 25% uh, is Ethereum. And now Cardano is 4%, which outweighs Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Chainlink, everything just like that. They just got into it and got a ton of Cardano. So does this make any difference to us on the chart? Is, is this really something that we need to worry about? So we come across to the ADA chart and it happened in the last 15 or so hours. This is the bar that would have encapsulated the news. Not much has happened. We've gone up 4%, but that's just another day in cryptocurrency. We didn't break any significant highs. We didn't get through or plummet on the news. We've just basically gone sideways. You'd expect some sort of big news like that to really push the market. But essentially, I'm just looking at the short-term understanding or the short-term outlook of the news compared to what this could mean to a project or crypto cryptocurrency long-term. The way that a fundamental analyst would look at the markets. So nothing has happened on that day. Let's have a look at some other news from the past. So this is February 23rd, Charles Hoskinson reveals significant updates for Cardano as price attempts recovery. What happened on that day? So this is essentially, he's just talking about uh, bringing in smart contracts. Cardano plans to release its long anticipated hard fork. This is before the hard fork came out. 23rd, this was in a bullish market as well. And on the 23rd was this day here. Not much happened to the news. The next day it went up 9%. We were in a bullish market, but we we're coming to the peak. And you can probably already see where the rest of the news items lay. And these are the little orange arrows. So you could say that maybe I've cherry picked these. Maybe I haven't, but I'm just taking what news I found. Uh, the news that I remember that came up that was pretty important. We were looking at the Mary Hard Fork for ages and you know, it would run the market up. And then when the Mary Hard Fork came, not much happened, right? So it was almost like people were just buying on, on news. Let's have a look at some of the other pieces. Cardano multi-asset Mary update launches to mainnet March 2nd. So March 2nd, let's just have a review of where March 2nd is. Right there, 
market went down five or five and a half percent. Next day, we had some more news. Market didn't really do anything. 3rd of March, Cardano Google search is at all time highs. Yep, we were watching that a hell of a lot and we haven't watched it in a while because all the Google searches have gone down. So that's the third. We were watching it on the way up and on the channel, we talked about this day potentially being the top. I could see that coming in because of massive volume and the volume is something I really want to pay attention to, but we'll talk about that uh, charting in other videos. Today, we're just looking at primarily the news. The countdown, Cardano to reach full decentralization on March 31st. So this news came out on the 5th. What happened on the 5th? Not much, 4%. And the next piece is uh, Coinbase Pro. So this was pretty big, March 16th. And we had a few days up. It skyrocketed 20% on that day. And then it didn't really go any further. It got 10% the following day and then it reversed. And so I could definitely see that as a weak signal, uh, in at least in the short term. For me, short term, weeks to this one happened to be almost a month. Uh, so that is pretty much the news. And an, I'm sure there are a lot of people that don't pay that much attention to really looking at the news itself and then saying, I need to base my investment decisions on the news. But I know that there is a lot of people that do base their investment decisions on the news. And the way I read it is you're just trying to get a lot of emotional energy behind it to say that news is going to drive this thing home. I'm doing a good thing. I am reading my news. I'm listening to people. I'm making my decisions. I'm going to buy my investments and now I'm going to wait. And you kind of want things to happen quite quickly, but it doesn't. So we had a lot of news here. Sure, we had some more news here as well in January. We have news all the time, but it didn't really do anything to the price. And then uh, moving forward a couple of months later, we got the final push into May, which I think was more driven just by the market itself. Bitcoin had a top in April and then uh, it was around this period. So that was Bitcoin's top. And then the altcoins went on a run and Ethereum went on a run and that sort of dragged everything else up with it. Plus Bitcoin was falling. So these cryptos had to move up in their Bitcoin value. And then we had a market tank on May 19th and that has pretty much stunned the market ever since. So now we've got some big news in a bearish market and it hasn't done anything to the price at all. This has got nothing to do with taking away from uh, Cardano, the project. It's got nothing to do with saying that Cardano, uh, Cardano is actually a bad project. Nothing, nothing like that at all. So what I want to look at next is Michael Saylor's idea about investing and what he looks at, say, long term. If we want to start switching our mindset from the sheep, the retail investors who are just running hot on one piece of news to the next piece of news and not being able to put all of this together. I want to understand how someone's mind works and what they are seeing and how they're piecing this together to get a big long-term picture. Not just like, hey, there's smart contracts. It's coming. It's going to be big. There's a hard fork coming. Charles Hoskinson's going on Joe Rogan. Like This isn't news that really means anything long term. If we can piece together what is happening in in our investments and in the world long term, that's going to give us more understanding and more solidity in our decisions so that when we do see this, these corrections of 60 plus percent, then we know, no, long term, nothing fundamentally has changed. This is just trader driven and speculative and just retail up and down. They don't really know what they're doing. They're just buying on the hopes, seeing more people make money and that, then they just lose the money because the market tanks. So they, they just don't have a plan to anything. And so I'm just going to play Michael Saylor, a clip from that interview and have a listen to that and what he is saying. So my view on this is Bitcoin is good because it's Apex property. It's Apex digital property. It's the, it's the most secure crypto asset in the world, the least likely to be impaired. But it's also the apex property. If I have a billion dollars and my choice is a billion dollars of gold, a billion dollars of silver, a billion dollars of lumber, a billion dollars of Apple stock, a billion dollars of Fang index, a billion dollars worth of land in California, a billion dollar building, a billion dollars of S&P 500 index, a billion dollars worth of sovereign debt, a billion dollars of US dollars or a billion euros or a billion yen or a billion fill in the blank or a billion worth of Bitcoin or a billion worth of any other crypto. Bitcoin is, in my opinion, the least risky, most useful thing for the 21st century economy if your time horizon is five years, it's probably a good idea. If it's 10 years, it's a better idea. If it's 100 years, it's a great idea. All credits to Ben Cohen for the interview on his channel with Michael Saylor. What I'm looking at there is the minute long section of his or 50 seconds that actually went on for 
two hours. And that little piece, Michael talks uh, previously to that about why he thinks Bitcoin is the greatest and the best thing and the only thing that we should be investing in, which is why he gives the examples of if I had a billion dollars into basically anything else in the world, I'd only go with Bitcoin because X, Y, Z. And that came at this time here. I remember listening to something of Michael's and he was doing his research through 2020, early 2020, had the dip move up. And that was a time where he was saying, I need to be buying some Bitcoin. Then in June came the announcement that he would buy Bitcoin with MicroStrategy. So at least get MicroStrategy to buy Bitcoin and put it on their books. So then it takes some time because it's a publicly traded company. These uh, Through this period was where the purchases happened. So this is August into September, more purchases in October, and we know that there were more after that. But there was a huge amount bought through this period with an approximate average price of about 11 grand. The point here is he did a lot of research to understand this is the way I'm seeing the world going. This is why I think Bitcoin is going to be the solution to this. Now I need to take action. Next, I sit back. If I see an opportunity, I buy some more. And that's pretty much his position. And it's just stuck like that ever since those uh, those lows in 2020 to go with this trend. So this is the way I see it anyway. It's very different to say a retail investor that comes into the space and searches anything on YouTube, just looking for someone to give them that that boost of hopium, make the, their emotions tingle as they put money into the markets to make them feel like they're doing something for this. I remember this experience when I first started trading that you can put money into the market and you happen to make money and you're like, well, I didn't really do anything apart from buy it and it went up and you potentially feel guilty or you, you're not sure that you feel guilty, but you think I have to do some work to this and really there's nothing else to do. So looking at this, just looking at the idea between a billionaire the way he's looked at the market and the actions he's taken compared to what I have seen firsthand through this first stage of the crypto Bitcoin bull market of 2021 plus 2017 that I went through plus the bear market of 2018 plus my investing history uh, in property markets through the peak of the uh, prior to the GFC I was in property then it's the same thing that happens every time especially with new retail investors that aren't necessarily looking at the big picture and are just trying to take little snippets of news here and there and the result that comes from that is not much and nothing really gets built long term it's just pretty much hope and a prayer so looking at cardano if we're going to use this as an example looking further back in 2020 the the research so we can learn moving forward was through 2020 and 2019, had to believe that Charles Hoskinson was going to build this smart contract ecosystem that could rival something like Ethereum or the new stuff that has come out like Polkadot. Uh, Solana was around at the time as well, but also needed to show itself on the stage and really cement its position. And so there was a lot of hope at that point because nothing else has been built. So these, this is a little bit different as well. It's very difficult to understand that, but if you can read through it, for example, listening to someone like Michael Saylor and having an idea of how he is reviewing his investments, then that might help you move forward with a, a new investment, whether it's Cardano, whether it's getting in heavier if we see this thing drop, whether it's something new that comes, whether it's loading up on something like Ethereum because you can see how this is going to affect the world in the next one, five, ten years time. Uh, I think that is going to be much more beneficial to the retail investor and especially to myself that has worked a hell of a lot more than trying to trade off some news and just hoping that this news is going to pump the market 500% or 1000%. So that's my look at retail news compared to a fundamental analyst, billionaire, Bitcoin maximalist, Michael Saylor. And that's what I see with a lot of the guys who are really getting into investments early or at least staying with their positions and understanding them long term. Uh, someone else who can add to that list would be Raul Powell as well. He's very interesting to listen to. And so during this period when the markets are boring, there's not much going on day to day. There's literally nothing happening. The market has gone sideways for a couple of weeks now. This is a time that I'm doing more research and learning about other projects or just learning more about the projects that I'm currently invested in. And then of course my trading comes in so that I can figure out better times to be purchasing these rather than 
just buying it because I think it's going to go up in the future, I can see that there is still a downtrend and I'm thinking I'm going to buy this at a lower price, but I'm convinced that this project is going to do very well long term. And so that's why I blend the two together, fundamental analyst and technical analyst, put those two together and that's going to give me a much better piece of the pie long term. So if you like the sound of that, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. If you want to see more of it, make sure you are following. Follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily Q&As where I answer your questions about all of this stuff in the investing world, cryptocurrency, stocks, trading, all of that stuff. I've been doing this for many years now and I absolutely love it. So I thank you guys for your support and for your comments and questions, all the stuff you're leaving down below. I'm reading that. And then of course, in Instagram as well. It's been great answering your questions and Twitter. Look, I've got so much to thank you for, especially in these times when the markets are a little quieter. Join us over there. I'll see you at the next video or in the Investor Accelerator Lite, which is launching on Monday. You know what to do until then. Have more fun to get more done.